So, just passed through airport security, and this is going to be a special episode today because I'm actually going to a different country. Well, kind of a different country. Not really. Almost. Almost barely a different country. What I mean technically, I mean very technically, as you can see, Edinburgh. Gonna go a bit further than this, a little bit further north, but let's get to it. Okay, so now we are in Edinburgh city centre. Gonna catch a train from Waverley, and it's just such a beautiful city. I mean, look at the architecture. Okay, so that was a long journey. I am now looking for a Welshman. Are there any Welshmen? I don't feel like shouting it because it's a little bit rude. I'm quite tired, if I'm honest. So excited for this, though. And we've seen him before. I'm looking for a Welshman named Geraint. Does anyone know a Welshman called Geraint? Cool, in there. So what have you got with you? A cup of coffee. A cup of coffee, and what's yeah. the other hand? And the brand new swanky OM1 Mark II. Wicked camera. This camera has up to 8.5 stops of image stabilization with 14 bit high res shooting capabilities. Has a whole suite of ND solutions, including a gradual ND filter and ND128. It can shoot continuous AF up to 50 frames per second and single point AF up to 120 frames per second at raw. Has 4K 60 and also AI subject detect. This camera is actually in an impressive upgrade from the previous generation. And I'm using my 8 to 25 for now as well. 8 to 25, okay, yeah, fair I enough. Love it. Super wide angle. I came down here for three or four weeks back and I managed to get a perfect reflection of the land and the sky. It was that still. Essentially darkening the, the top half of the image by me three stops. So it's literally just like putting in a graduated ND filter. But instead of having to carry all the extra stuff around with you, it's now built into the camera. Oh, that's sick. Yeah. Woo! Oh, my God. <laughs> and then travesty hit. Why, God, why? It's coffee. No! <laughs> oh, more footage, I reckon. Yeah. What do you reckon? 240 or 120? 240, go for it. So it's got video capabilities as well, has it? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's going to be just like 4K. Um, but I think for something like this, I think slow mo will look pretty cool. Yeah. Plus, I can shoot with a higher shutter speed then, can I? Yeah. Because it's, um, it's a bit tricky to get a 50th. I haven't got any mic. My filters. Luckily, we don't really have to worry about too, you know, we don't have to worry all that much. What's that? It's all weather sealed. It's all weatherproof. And I guess I could just let it air dry. It's going to be enough. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it to the wind until the You just take your hair dry everywhere, do you? <sighs> yeah. But I do need to clean the front of that off. Luckily, I invested in some lens spots, especially for today. The footage, I think, looks quite nice. Right. So if I went in, so 8 to 25 is a really useful um, focal range. Because it's nice and wide. You know, it's the 35mm it turns. It's a 16 to 50 and four lens. Yeah. So I find that very useful. This has a whole suite of real world solutions for people that just want to do landscape photography on the go without carrying too much. You've moved up to Scotland? Yeah, back in October. So it's been about four months now. Yeah, what have you been, why, why, why Scotland then? I fancy the change really. We needed a big move. And um, as a nature photographer, um, I felt as though I needed to go to somewhere where I was going to be surrounded by it. Yeah. Um, and I guess, you know, I've been living in Wales basically all my life. I uh, haven't travelled all that much. And an opportunity came up and it would have been silly to, to not go for it. So what do you reckon it's done for your photography coming up here? I'm going to ponder that one for a sec because it's done a lot. Yeah. It's done a lot. What it's done, it's allowed me to diversify and not have any sort of fears about diversifying because I'm, I've been specializing in pretty much macro photography for the past five or six, maybe even longer years. And um, a lot of my work and my career has been built around this one kind of specific subject. But, you know, the longer you do things, um, you realize, well, you know, I need to open up my my creativity a little bit and you know I love all things nature when I first bought 
when I got my first ever camera, it was to photograph nature in its entirety. So it's really cool now that I've started rediscovering a passion for these things. Yeah. And um, I'm in the, the perfect place to make that transition easier for me. Yeah. And I'm just surrounded by animals, surrounded by nature. I've got a hundred birds basically that come to my feeders every day. I've got five red squirrels that come to my feeders every day. And it's just nice. I feel as though I'm living inside of nature, whereas before I used to try to attract nature to me. Yeah. Now I feel like I'm on, I'm on its terms. Yeah. This looks. Thanks, man. For the past um, couple of weeks, I've been testing out the bird detect and the subject detect. But finally, there's another human being in front of me. So I just uh, popped it into human detection mode, looking for your face, right? <laughs> Luckily, I found it. Yeah, and there's, you... <laughs> there's nothing more insulting. No. So just checking out the autofocus now, moving forward towards the camera, moving backwards, just to see kind of if it's tracking me correctly. And uh, the famous videographer, Garrett Radford. I know. At the helm. Probably not the best person in the world to do this. <laughs> I've zoomed in a bit just to see. Yeah. Looks good to me. Yeah, looks good. Yeah. Yeah, sick. In this amazing place up in the Scottish Highlands somewhere. I don't even know. We literally just got dropped off here, didn't we? we did. Really? Yeah. It's kind of scary. Not really, but no, it's good. It's lovely. Yeah, we got our friend dropped us off. So we're going to be up in up here. We're nestled in the bottom of the Cairngorms. So yeah. we're surrounded. We're in a national park here. It's, also it's, near a Bothy as well. Yeah, we're near a Bothy. So we're in there. We love a Bothy. Yeah. So we're basically having a wonderful experience. And yeah. It feels yeah, like yeah. a proper adventure. Yeah, it? it does. Love an adventure. It's always an adventure with you. Yeah, because we started today with like a rough plan of some yeah. of the subjects we hope to get. But Stu and myself, we got a lot in common in the respect that we just kind of just like going out and just seeing what happens. Yeah, see, see what, what happens see exactly. It's a big watch. Even it's amazing. Part of my time. How are you doing? How are you doing? In the Buffy. So, do you want to ask me something? Com like, comparison to the OM1, what is. It has a lot of similarities to the OM1, but it's cool. I got two cameras now. So I love them both equally. The updates may appear to be minimal for some. I will say that for me, they've added quite a lot of creative tools to my workflow. So I guess like my favorite feature so far is the new graduated ND filter that's been built into the camera. Because we've already got a neutral density filter that goes up to six stops. We now have a grad filter built into the camera that is pretty customizable also. It's auto rotates, so whether you're in landscape or vertical, it'll flip already for you. So maybe you just want the left hand side of the image kicked back a little bit in terms of the exposure. And I could have really done with this, you know, about a month before it arrived. Because I was out in the woods, I found this beautiful mushroom and it was all snowy, magical, and I'd like to backlight my subjects. Um, but the left hand side of the frame, the top left hand side was just overexposed. I couldn't balance it out. But now, if I'm ever in that situation again, I can just switch on the grad filter, darken down that side of the frame and fire away. And it's when you need things the most, you realize how valuable they are. Mm. <laughs> um, we've got these new rubberized dials, and these have been a gift from the photo gods for me, especially when I've been out in the snow, in sub-zero temperatures, with thick gloves on. Just that even just that little extra bit of help means that I don't have to freeze <laughs> and it feels nice feels it, it's, nice. it's like it's better because you imagine if you're out and it's yeah. all weathers slippery wet doesn't matter yeah. one of the coolest things i've been shooting with lately is just is the bird detect ai like i'm not a full-time birder i've got some growth in my wildlife photography that needs to happen so what i think is extra awesome is that as i'm developing these skills I've got a camera here that's got these preloaded features in there to help me on my way. And if you're already an amazing photographer, think about how epic it's going to be for you. Because it's just helping you out. Mm. So I'm excited. Like, I love, I love it. Already, I'm, I'm into it. I mean, I've been playing with the um, Grad ND filter basically all the time. Yeah. It's awesome. And I've been overusing it. So for some of the shots I've been shooting with it, it hasn't been right for. Mm. But this is how you learn, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm trying to find its place. Um, but I've got it on now, and it's just, it's just incredible, incredible fun. You have to do, you have to try it later. 
being a part of nature. It'd be good if we can see any birds as well, to be fair. So it's going to be really interesting to see kind of the range we can do. And I honestly can't wait for us to actually put the teleconverter on this to actually see how far away we can actually take some images of some awesome wildlife. But yeah, you enjoying yourself anyway, Garrett? Of course, you're here. <laughs> when it comes to actually using a Micro Four Thirds camera and what they really are very good at and specialize in, it's this kind of stuff. Being out in nature, having that little extra reach. And with the 150-600, you can do that really, really quite well. It's a little bit weighty, but because you've got that range, it gives you pretty much everything that you would actually really need on a day out where you're shooting stuff like this. And in all honesty, I quite like it. It's gonna take a little while to get used to because that's a very long range at 1200 millimeter, especially when you're shooting handheld. Now, what is it like to shoot handheld at 1200? You're gonna get better shots, obviously, when you use a tripod. I actually just took some video of Geraint uh, just down by the lake now. So I found this wicked cool scene down here, and this is giving me the range on this lens has a lot of potential for what you can get out in the wild. The only thing I would say is that it's starting to get dark at this point, so I needed more light in the lens to get a decent exposure. Whilst he was down by the water, he checked out the stabilization at 8.5 stops on the camera, and this is the shot he came up with. It's pretty cool, isn't it? I think the high-res mode now has 14-bit RAW files instead of 12. Yeah. So that, that increases our color space quite a bit. So when we're processing our raw files now, we've got 80 megapixel raw files in 14 bit. And when you consider that's in a micro four thirds body that's compact like this, that's unreal. 150 to 600. And there's a seeker deer just over there. So I'm kind of grateful that I've got this extended reach. Yeah. And I'm super grateful that we've got <laughs> IS as well, because this is effectively 1,200 mil. Um, it's pretty tricky to keep that stable, yeah. especially handheld, but this, the deer is just coming over there now, and it's plenty of light, so I'll just shoot with all the focus points open, use the subject detect. Dogs and cats, but it's close enough. Yeah. <laughs> See what happens. <laughs> <laughs> ah, he's just lurking behind a tree now. Well, this is why this focal length is so cool, mm. because we're far enough away that he's not really bothered by us, he's doing his own thing. Um, but if I didn't have this, I've got my 300 f4 and a Times 2 teleconverter as well. Yeah. But that means I'm shooting at f8, whereas at least I've got an extra stop, I think, f6.3. Um, the other thing is, is that this is actually a teleconverter compatible as well, isn't it? Yeah. So I, my mind is slightly blown because you can see how far away that deer is up there. And I'm using all of the focus points with a very long lens shooting basically between trees and the autofocus is locating the animal for me. That's incredible. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially considering of that is tricky. But I got this picture that I propped in quite heavily on a tiny mushroom. It's, mi it's mi minuscule, it's a tiny little mushroom. Um, but I cropped it in and it's about 5,000 pixels on the long end after cropping yeah. from a, I think it's a 10,000 megapixel file that we get. I mean, that's not bad going. No, not at all. I mean, it's not applicable to every single shot. So it has some limitations. So everything has to be rock steady. So I use my three legged thing tripod and I choose to use it when it's not too windy and the subject isn't moving. But for landscapes, macro shots, Punching out that amount of detail is just amazing. So you toot in the car. You toot in the car? Yeah, and then some deer showed up. <laughs> but um, it's gone so grey. Very atmospheric now. Nice. Grainy. Nice. <laughs> it's true, I'm like this. Same with my macros, any subject really. Mm. If you get eye level to it, it gives you a really nice perspective, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, but also, it means that I can steady the lens a little bit. Yeah. So I'm laying on the ground and then that's helps stabilize it a little bit on the long end as well. Yeah, there you go. But I managed to, like, I was grateful. Because you know I love my 300 F4. But I was very grateful in that I, I was super grateful that I could actually zoom in and out just then. Mm. Um, because there were times where the deer were 
getting a little bit too close, so he's chopping off the top of the antlers while they're composing and their legs look a bit weird because they're yeah. cropping them funny. Which is what you wouldn't really get out of a pine, is it? You didn't know. And like, I couldn't move there because you would have annoyed them. Yeah. So it, it is very, very awesome to be able to have that sort of range, especially if working with animals. Yeah. Same lens. Sick. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So again, of course, thank you, Geraint, for putting me up and uh, letting us to have a go with the new camera. Really excited to see what you come up with with that. Really like the look of the camera. I think it challenges a lot of other manufacturers as well with what they've actually put into it. And being that your own systems are still a very new brand, it's interesting to see what they're doing with it. Anyway, if you like this video, make sure you like, follow, and subscribe if you want to see more. Have a good day. Because there's no such thing as a bad camera. I don't think there is. There's no such thing. It's just about getting one that suits you and the kind of photography you do. You know, I'm hiking all the time. I'm out walking, I cover a lot of miles. And you know, we've been out today and I've got a 1,200 millimeter lens that fits in my backpack yeah. and I've got three camera bodies. So I've got Pretty eight. Good. To 1200 mil covered.